Welcome to this lecture on endocrine physiology. In the previous lecture, my colleague Hashim talked about the pituitary gland and its hormones. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the thyroid gland and its metabolic hormones. The thyroid gland is one of the most important glands in our body because it controls all of our metabolic activities as well as the development of many organ systems like the central nervous system and the musculoskeletal system. Now let's start with a brief introduction about this gland and a revision about its embryology, anatomy and histology. I think you know that this gland is one of the first glands that start functioning in our body originating from, from the foramen cecum in the posterior one third of the tongue descending from there until it reaches its final destination anterior to the trachea and inferior to the larynx. It is composed of two lobes the right lobe and left lobe separated by the isthmus sometimes the isthmus may be connected to the upper cartilage like the thyroid cartilage or coracoid cartilage by a pyramidal lobe pyramidal lobe it's an embryological remnant from the descending of the thyroid tissue now regarding the histology of this gland its histological appearance resembles its gross anatomy so if you examine this gland grossly you found it lobulated or folliculated and if you examine the cross section of this gland under the light microscope you will find millions of follicles these follicles are surrounded by two type of cells, types of cells the follicle cells and parafollicular or C cells follicle cells as the name implies are these cells which surrounds the lumen of the follicle these cells are simple cuboidal epithelium and secretes the major secretions of these glands which are the thyroxine and the triiodothyrodinine the shape of these cells resembles the metabolic activities activity of our body so in hyperactivity conditions like hyperthyroidism these cells become columnar because as you know more and more metabolic activity more protein synthesis more granules and finally these cells will undergo hypertrophy on the other hand in hypoactivity conditions these cells become squamous this is all about the, th the follicle cells on the other hand parafollicular cells have different embryological origin and different function these cells secretes calcitonin which is important in calcium metabolism and will be discussed later with the parathyroid hormone okay now let's start with physiology the thyroid metabolic hormones here we are going to talk about the synthesis secretion mechanism of action and regulation of thyroid hormone what do we mean by thyroid metabolic hormones thyroid metabolic hormones are thyroxine and triiodothyronine these hormones are derived from tyrosine amino acid which contains the benzene group the presence of benzene group makes its lipids, its lipid soluble Another important note is that thyroid metabolic hormones contains iodine. Actually, the thyroid, I, I think that the thyroid gland is the only place in our body that can metabolize the iodine. Now, 93% of thyroid metabolic hormones secreted by thyroid gland are thyroxine. However, almost all thyroxines are converted to T3 which is a triiodothyronine eventually before start acting in our cells why because the triiodothyronine is four times as potent as thyroxine okay now the general effects of thyroid metabolic hormones as you see thyroid metabolic hormone in general regulates our metabolism it increases our basal rate of metabolism and it also have a very important role in thermoregulation 
It also activates many organ systems like cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and many other endocrine glands. It also contributes in central nervous system development as well as musculoskeletal development that results in the growth process. Synthesis and secretion of thyroid metabolic hormone. As you see in this figure, the synthesis of thyroid metabolic hormone is a very complicated process, having many enzymes and catalysts. So any deficiency in any of these enzymes may cause serious problems. That we have, that why, that's why we have to study this process in details. The first step in the first step in, in, in thyroxine synthesis and secretion is iodide trapping. As you know, ingested iodide is absorbed from the GI tract and distributed all over the body by the blood. Now, what's the difference between iodide and iodine? Iodine and iodide both are two different forms of the same element. The term iodine means two iodine atoms connected together in one molecule. However, the term iodide means the ionic state of the iodine, which occurs in salts like potassium iodine, or uh, like when you say about the chlor chloride or oxygen oxide fluor fluoride, we say I iodine, iodide. Iodide represents the safe form of iodine that can be ingested and absorbed from the GI tract. Okay, now let's return to iodide trapping. Most of the iodides which are absorbed by the GI tract are excreted by the kidneys. However, Small amount of iodide ions are trapped inside the follicular cells in the thyroid gland by this process. Firstly, a protein, which is called sodium iodide symporter, transports iodine inside the cell by a secondary active transport. When we say secondary active transport, it, it means that it uses ATP indirectly. So the hydrolysis of ATP is used to create sodium ions potential by the action of sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump creates sodium diffusion potential towards insides towards the cell. So sodium iodide importer couples the diffusion of sodium with the entry of iodide. Now iodide is trapped inside the cell. It's then, uh, iodide is then transported from the apical domain of this cells by another protein which is called the chloride iodide counter transporter or pendrin. Pendron also uses a secondary active transport mechanism similar to sodium iodide importer. Okay. Now the problem with iodide is that iodide is is less active than iodine molecule. Why? During the synthesis of thyroxine, we need to conjugate iodine with the aromatic ring. As you know, addition of iodine to aromatic ring is electrophilic substitution. So we need to make iodine more electrophilic. This is done by an enzyme system called H2O2 peroxidase that oxidizes iodine and convert converts it to more electrophilic form. This is the complex. 
Now the second step in the synthesis and secretion of, thy of thyroid metabolic hormone is the synthesis of thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin is a protein. So it is synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and then sent to Golgi apparatus and excreted outside the cells. A very important note is that thyroglobulin is considered as, ex as an exocrine excretion because it is released to a lumen attached to the gland without reaching the bloodstream. Okay, which is unique about this protein that it, it's contain about 100 to 120 tyrosins in order to be converted to thyroxin eventually. Okay, the next step is the organification of thyroglobulin. Organification means addition of iodine to tyrosine residues in thyroglobulin. As you see in this figure, the results of organification is monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. These molecules are conjugated to form a triiodothyronin and a tetraiodothyronin, which is called thyroxin. A byproduct from this reaction may result, which is reversed triiodothyronin, which has no known metabolic effects. After synthesis of thyroxine residues that is attached to thyroglobulin, now we have th now thyroglobulin is stored in the lumen of the follicle. What's unique about thyroid gland is that it's one of the few glands that it, it stores its products outside the cell. Actually, its stores are sufficient to supply body for nearly three months. Okay. Once follicular cells are stimulated, they send sodobodia and ingest thyroglobulin by a process known as pinocytosis. This forms a vesicle that enters the cell. This vesicle will fuse with lysosomes. Lysosomes will release lysosomal proteins that's going to hydrolyze thyroglobulin. Hydrolysis of thyroglobulin results in the formation of T3 and T4, the thyroid metabolic hormones that will be secreted in the bloodstream and okay that will be secreted in the bloodstream to perform its function. A small amount of a byproduct of this reaction MIT and DIT. MIT it, it is monoiodotyrosine and DIT diiodotyrosine. A small amount of these byproducts results from this reaction. These byproducts are recycled by enzyme called D-iodinase. A deficiency in this enzyme may cause serious problems like hypothyroidism and goiter. Now we finish the synthesis and secretion of thyroid metabolic hormone. Now, how can thyroid metabolic, uh, metabolic hormones transported all over the body? Regarding the transport of th uh, T3 and T4, due its lipophilicity, T3 and T4 are bound to plasma proteins. Okay. 
There are three major proteins that bind to T3 and T4. Thyroxin binding globulin and albumin and pre-albumin. Thyroid metabolic hormones, thyroxin and triiodothyronin, bind to these proteins with high affinity, which results in a slow release of these hormones and long half-life of these hormones. Actually, the affinity of binding of T T4 to plasma proteins is more than the affinity of binding of T3. That's why I think that uh, thyroxine is released firstly as, uh, as T4 to be transported and to be stored in the body longer in a longer time and then it will be converted to T3 and start functioning inside the target tissue. Now, a very important note regarding thyroid metabolic hormones is that these hormones have a very long latent period, partially from the long half-life and partially from their signaling pathway, which, con which, which contains gene expression and the production of new proteins and, and enzymes that will delay their action.